<laughs> hey everyone, how is everyone doing? Um, it's been a long time since I spoke to you. Last time I spoke to you all, it was on Instagram stories for the first time. Um, as I'd set myself a goal, or Joe had set, my partner Joe had set me a goal, um, that once I got to 2,000 followers on Instagram, that I would start talking on here. Um, which was something for me that I thought was such a long way off um, that I was happy to agree to the goal. But then I finally got to 2,000 followers, which is amazing. And I'm so grateful for you all for following. But it then also meant that, like, drat, I actually now have to speak on here. Um, so following on from that and talking on there, it was difficult more so the anxiety and the apprehension of talking thinking about talking on here rather than the actual talk in itself. And the more I chatted, um, I found that actually I was just talking away, rambling nonstop and actually uh, 15 seconds, 60 seconds became minutes. <laughs> and I realized that my whole Insta stories was just nonstop chatting, rambling on, which is why I then reached out to you all and asked what would be a better concept? Would it be talking about, things and topics that I wanted to speak about um, in my captions and on my blogs, would it be better to talk on my Insta stories or create a longer video, like an Instagram TV video, and then place it somewhere on my profile so that it could be looked at again and again. And thankfully, because of your feedback, um, and most of you voted for Instagram story, sorry, Instagram TV, I'm here trying to make a longer video and with a bit of editing as well. So in light of that, um, it's taken me a bit more time. Um, I've been really busy uh, with work and also designing our new build house. Um, but it's also taken me a bit of time just to learn about video editing software and then really pluck the courage to make another video. So this is my first time. So be nice, <laughs> don't be too harsh. Obviously constructive criticism is always welcome. Um, but yeah, this is my first time putting a video up and essentially doing a little bit of editing. I'm hoping it's not too much editing, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a guinea pig, um, it's a trial and I would love to know what your thoughts are and like I say, any constructive feed feedback would be great. I'm thinking I'm going to pop this onto um, Instagram TV um, as well as potentially YouTube. I'm not sure yet, but I thought I'd put it out there. Um, in case it does end up on YouTube and people are wondering why am I talking about Instagram on a YouTube video? Um, but yeah, so I've kind of given you a bit of background about me, um, how I've got to this position of like now deciding to create videos, but essentially um, I've always, what's always driven this is a blog. Uh, initially I wanted an outlet to write I used to, I did an English literature degree before my law degree, before working in law, um, and I just love writing, and I've kind of refound that, and I'm coupling writing with just the bits and pieces that I'm learning along the way about my own personal development, so what I'm learning, and the positive effects of that, and I just want to share that with everyone um, on the written word. But then what I was finding, as I was writing on a blog, I needed to be able to put it out there, um, so that it could be read. Um, so I decided to use my Instagram profile to basically update people when my blog was available or new posts. Um, and then I decided to also use pictures, mainly because I, I like fashion, I like you know dressing up and whatnot, but I wanted to use the pictures and then words in pictures to try and get like a snapshot of my messaging, which would then be in the caption or the blog post itself to try and use Instagram as a vehicle to get people to read the longer post. Or if they don't have time to read the longer post, then to at least get the snapshot, the, the kind of principal point of what I was trying to share um, along. And I suppose what you're seeing here is just like a natural progression on from that. Um, what I was finding that obviously writing on multiple platforms, so writing the blog posts, then writing the captions and then the snapshots for the pictures would mean that it would take a lot of time and would also mean that to get my full messaging across would take a lot of time, especially with myself working a full-time job um, and also looking after Joe, who's got long COVID as well as um, 
planning and building our new house. So it's a lot of work and time consumed. So the next, I suppose, natural stage is to, to have videos because ultimately it's a quicker way to for me to get my message across, hopefully, depending on how long the editing will take. Um, but I suppose that just gives you a background of how um, I've progressed to here and the whole kind of background as to why I'm doing what I want to do. So now I've given you an intro um, and a little bit more about me and my page and what I'm, I'm trying to do here. Um, the whole purpose of today's video is just to talk about how everyone is feeling, the fact that this year has been an absolute roller coaster. Um, and I popped up a blog post about my just my thoughts and, and, and how I've been doing um, yesterday on my page. Um, so if you click onto my bio, you can get a link straight to that post. But in case the written word isn't your medium and you would prefer a video, that's great also. I just wanted to talk a bit more about the post and my reasoning for, for writing it. Um, I mean, I think we can all agree that this last year has been absolutely gnarly. Um, no one could have predicted it. Um, if you have nightmares at night, this could have been in your nightmare. You wouldn't have been able to predict it, but how I see it is this, this year never ends. And the, there is light at the tunnel, but the light is foggy. Um, and the UK government for sure aren't sure how to get to that light. But um, I've had some really bad experiences from this year, but also some really good experiences. Um, one of the things I've liked the most is the fact that we've all seemed to have slowed down, um, not just myself personally, but the world too. So I feel like this year is a bit like a regroup, a regression, a real chance to look at ourselves, what we take for granted. But then at the same time, this year has come with such hardships and those hardships are so widespread and so different for so many different people. Um, my own personal hardships has been from a financial hardship to the, the hardest of all was just watching my partner go through a virus which has literally changed his entire life um, and how he's living. Um, as well as watching our personal, our friends, our close friends completely um, get drawn in with the fact that there is no virus, even though that we personally are experiencing it every day. Um, and that's something, that's a whole other topic. Um, but along with that, it's just that whole feeling of overwhelmed, um, me using coping mechanisms, which is complete hyperproductivity, but, but then putting pressure on myself when I'm not being productive. I mean, the list goes on. Um, multiple holidays have not taken place. We were meant to get married. My brother's meant to get married. I mean, generally, the list does go on and on. And I don't want this to be just a focus about me. I want this to be a more broader sense. You know, like some of the hardships I have have, you know, are absolutely minuscule in comparison to others. And ultimately, it's just a real talk about how is everyone feeling? And I think sometimes what may come across from my posts or my page is that I'm always positive. I'm just, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm just like this ray of sunshine um, of positive and happiness. And I wanted to talk about that. I know there's been a few questions about that and I thought this would be a good time to talk about that. So first thing first, no. I don't wake up just a complete ray of sunshine every single day. Um, letting you in a bit more about me, um, I don't know how much I would talk about that, but I've been through some personal experiences in my life where I definitely wasn't happy for a very long period of time. I, you know, often would think, let's just go to sleep and not wake up for a while. Um, you know, and I found it incredibly hard to find light in my day. Um, and I used coping mechanisms just to get me through my day, not even realising. And I suppose as a product of that and reading many personal development books, um, a little bit of therapy, um, and just rethinking about what's important in my life and what brings me joy, I've started to be able to kind of maneuver through life and carve out 
things that make me feel good that are good for me and carve out things that don't make me feel good and certainly aren't good for me um and this is where my where i begun to share bits about things that i do that make me feel better i mean more positive um give me a better mindset and I focus on that as a health aspect. I'd focus on my mind probably more than my physical, you know, like we all go on diets, diets to lose weight. I mean, I'm on a mental diet <laughs> and I focus on like my mind probably more than my physical diet. It's funny, I'm just like watching myself on this video and as I'm talking about a physical diet, I'm like putting out my dress. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, Ultimately, long story short, I just wanted to say that I'm not always feeling positive. I don't always feel great. I still, even with all this personal development and focusing on four positive things a day and all the various other things that I do to bring positivity into my life, I do still feel overwhelmed. I mean, and it would be unnatural not to feel overwhelmed in 2020. Let's just be serious about that. Um, but I just wanted to share that part of me with you guys so you can relate and understand where I'm coming from. I suppose the di biggest difference for me now versus say 10 years, eight years ago is I would go through life um, choosing to not have happiness. Like I would make a choice. If something was really like really happy, like a partner who brings me so much happiness, I would choose to try and push the partner away because I didn't want to let any happiness come into my life for it to then be lost. Um, I had a thing about losing people, losing happiness. Um, so those were some of my coping, coping mechanisms that I brought into my life. Whereas now I understand that like life is for living, which means to live, you've got to have happiness and also you've got to have the the rubbish bits, the sad bits as well. And I suppose now I choose to embrace and allow both the good and the bad experiences into my life and feel them, which is important because I never used to allow myself to feel um, bad things. I try to shut it out. And now that I feel them, I choose to learn about them. I, I question, why are they there? Why do I feel like this? what can I do to prolong the good stuff or to get rid of the bad stuff? And I have that internal dialogue with myself. Um, and I suppose that's the difference from where I am now and then. But anyways, as I say, I can talk for Britain and I have been rambling on. Um, but ultimately, just getting back to the reason behind the post, um, I just wanted you guys to know that I do feel overwhelmed. I have found it incredibly hard this year um there are moments of sadness um and, and mainly for my partner who's got long covid because it is incredibly difficult for him um and it's also incredibly hard to watch someone be that ill um but ultimately the reason i'm you know what you're seeing on instagram or what i put up or what i write about and that that level of positivity it isn't fake it it's truth and that is how I feel. And I suppose the reason I am able to, to maintain that level of positivity is because 99% of the days that I wake up, I choose, like I consciously make a choice to think positively. I consciously make a choice to think about all the things that I'm grateful for. I consciously make a choice to include four small things in my day and they will be small they're not going to be these big amazing things but four small things that make me feel good and when there is hard times and sadness i t i make myself have that internal dialogue but then i also look forward and see what i can take from that and i want to share that with you and so you can understand like what I'm feeling and why I do these things and why I want to share these things with you all. So yeah, um, before I carry on chatting away and a whole hour has passed, <laughs> I just wanted to share a little bit more about how I'm feeling, uh, my positivity levels. 
um and yeah i've enjoyed talking to you i enjoy like i don't know i feel like i'm talking with a friend um but i suppose my lasting thoughts are this if you are feeling great amazing if you're feeling terrible obviously not so amazing but the key thing that i always tell myself um is that life is forever changing you could sit still in your chair and not move and the world is still moving the life is still changing and whilst that is actually a scary concept to think that the world will just continue going without you even participating it's also an amazing concept because what that actually means is that your circumstances your opportunities in life the people around you everything can change and nothing is permanent so if you feel terrible that's not going to be permanent too and that can change and to always remember that so when you look forward you are actually looking forward as long as you're making your own choices on how you want to live your life you are making an impact and change to your own life and to those around you so just remember that and I find that that gives me comfort whenever I'm feeling down overwhelmed or unsure so just keep that in mind life is moving quickly lockdown 2.0 is nearly over um 2020 is literally like i'm gonna blink <laughs> and it's gonna be over um but yeah think about that tomorrow when you wake up or you know whenever you have a bad day you can change that bad day or you can start the very next day um but you know where you stand today is definitely not where you're going to stand next year and yeah take that away with you but thanks very much for any of those who've still holding on and, and made it to the end um and yeah i hope this will be one of many conversations we have in the future have a lovely day guys